Welcome. Welcome to Between the Covers. <laughs> Between the Covers is the show for readers and writers and lovers of books. I'm Stephanie, and I'm so thrilled that you're joining me. I'm an author and a publisher, and I am so thrilled to have a new author. Well, it's actually her second book, but it's a first time for this book. So we have a new author tonight, some fabulous guests, celebrations, all sorts of excitement going on. So please welcome our author, Lois Cooper. Yes. Good evening. <laughs> and, and guests, Teresa Sanders and Dr. Newland. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> So we have a brand new book here. Yes. 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 Okay, I have to say this is the first time that I've had a guest that coordinated her clothing <laughs> with her I book. I about that. I am, loving, I am loving the clothing book coordination. I think that that's just fabulous. <laughs> so we're, we made it to this day. Yes. Not yes. easy. It was not bad. Not bad. I mean, okay. you really did most of everything. Well, thank All you. I had to do was interview these ladies, which uh -oh. was so much fun. Well, they're wonderful ladies. You know, so, you and know. it was just it was just fun learning about them, and um, we discovered we had much more in common yes. than we even knew. Yep. And we've known each other over twenty years. Oh my <laughs> God! Yes. Wow. You know, I'm I'm so fortunate that I work with authors, and one of the things that I love is that it's a journey and an adventure to get the book. Yes. Like like people think it's about the book, and it's about you know just we have to get it like it's a finish line, and we have to get there. But really. It's about the friendships and the connections yes. and mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. of the process. So by the time you get here, it's it's like look at all we've built. Right. Yes. You know yeah. the, the the process of writing a book. I've always said because I see it, it changes your life, mm -hmm. and it changes your life not just when the book is in your hand, but it's this process that you've gone through. You've evolved. Absolutely. You've evolved as a person, and your relationships have changed. Yes. And I think that that is just wonderful. Absolutely thank you. Wonderful. It's been wonderful. So thank you, ladies. You're more than welcome. <laughs> now, besides being a writer, um, do you like to read as well? I love to read. Do and you? I read every day. Oh gosh! As my husband knows. <laughs> what do you read every day? I try to support African American um, authors, actually. Okay. And so, do you I have any have favorites? Give us some shout outs. Oh my gosh! Well, her books are kind of. A little on the edge, but okay. <laughs> we, we like edge. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Let, let, let me be a little <laughs> safe here. <laughs> we like edge. It's okay. Kimberla Lawson Roby. Okay. She writes some very good books. Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. It follows a family through a lot of drama. Whoa, <laughs> drama! Oh, okay. lots mm. of drama. That's fun stuff. And you read every day. Every day. Every day. Okay, you hear that, all of our authors? <laughs> yeah. Reading is not dead. I love that. No, not at all. And I have to have a book. I don't like reading on a tablet. I know. Um, yeah. I, know. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I read because I have to read so much. I read, you know, four or five books a week often. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I have a lot of them on the tablet because it's convenient. Yes. Sure. Yeah. But there's nothing like I love <laughs> holding books in my hand. <laughs> there's nothing like holding a book in your hand. That yes. You want to hold a book in your hand? Oh. 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 Just a little bit. Oh. I get that. I get it feels that. great. Doesn't it? I know. There's nothing like a book. How about you? Do you love to read? I love to do read. Do you? Oh, good. I've been reading since I was a little girl. My mother used to say the cheapest way to travel is through a book. It is. <laughs> and we would read, go to the library, and it used to be an adventure. So still to this day, I read everything. Newspapers, I still read a newspaper. Jeez. I love the paper. Okay, you and hear that newspapers? I, I there's some, one <laughs> person left. Yeah. There's one person left. Yeah, oh they're trying goodness. to get me digital subscriptions, but I'm like, I would love to pick up the paper. But I just love books. I don't know what I'm going to do with all of my books. I have all my textbooks. Mm. I, I have my textbooks in college. Wow. Yes, yes. So I don't know. Maybe we'll create some kind of a library <laughs> yeah. you know, that we can That's have. Amazing. Young people come in and just take a book. Mm. Yeah, just I bet one. you have thousands. I have thousands. Oh of books. my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love readers. Yes. I love readers. <laughs> yeah. You have a favorite style, author, <sighs> genre, or you just like everything? Well, you know what I've moved towards recently. Um, Michelle Obama's becoming. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Not only did I read the book, I went to see her yeah. at the Barclays. Did too. you? And you were there too? I, yes. DC, it felt like you were in DC. Right? Yeah. Okay. It felt like we were sitting in the living room. Absolutely. Just, just me and her. I didn't know you were there, but I thought it was <laughs> just me that. and her. And then after that, I did get the audio book oh because God. not only did I love reading it, but then I love listening to Good. it. It was just wonderful. Mm. Fabulous, yes. fabulous. So another another Michelle fan over there. Yeah, so definitely um, read that not long ago, and I went to the um, Becoming tour in D.C. because my niece lives in Maryland, and I talk about my niece in the book and my niece yes, and nephew yes. who I raised. And so we did it as a girls' day, Ooh, girls' girl night. Day. I love that. You know, went out like to dinner <laughs> and went and sat, and it was that same feeling. I yes. mean, it was such a large stadium, but it really was such an intimate setting and the mm -hmm. conversation. And because we were in D.C., mm -hmm. Barack mm -hmm. Obama. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. oh I'm And that took the whole audience <laughs> in a totally different direction. He came out at the and and it was just great and he embraced her and he made a few jokes oh. and then they, he escorted her off the stage which oh. was everything oh. so that was a really really great um, experience and wow. now I'm reading I have a, a mentor who is um, Reverend Dr. Alfonso Wyatt and I was featured I did an essay on mental health and men and healing in his book a couple years back and he has a book now that is Beware of the Mind Hustler and so mm. it's talking about you know distraction tactics in our thinking right. and how to make sure that our thinking is kind of elevated to where we'd like our quality of life to be. Wow. So I just started reading that one. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, if any of you are big readers like we have on the couch and you're not really sure what to do with your books afterwards, I do have an idea <laughs> oh, okay. because uh, we are always plugging for the book fairies. The book fairies collect books here yes. on Long Island. They collect over 50,000 books a month of all types, so they'll take your textbooks too. <laughs> <laughs> they do children's books, grown-up books, whatever it is. They're redistributed to, there are school districts right here on Long Island that can't afford to have libraries for their students. They're going to adults throughout the city, and also they're supporting libraries over in Africa with their books. So if you have any books, please, Consider thebookfairies.org. Bring them here on a Wednesday night. We'll give you a glass of wine in exchange for your <laughs> books. Because I, I, t I make a drive down there once a week with a whole, I have a trunk full of books right now for wow. the book fairies. Oh, that's great. One day a month, they open their doors at their warehouse just for teachers to come in, take as much as you want, fill your car, because there are so many school districts without books. Oh, so great. please don't forget the book mm -hmm. fairies. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We're going to open some champagne, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 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 Writing a book is the adventure of a lifetime. Red Penguin Books take pride in giving our authors a publishing experience that is stress-free and celebratory all the way. Some of our authors first approach us with no more than an idea for a book that's ready to sprout. Others submit completed manuscripts. Whether you're at either end or anywhere in between, our goal is to get you published. At Red Penguin Books, we offer options and opportunities that are unique in the world of publishing, and all of them are designed to keep you, the author we so deeply respect, in the driver's seat, unlike other publishing houses. So, if you want to write a book and are looking for a publisher, we've got you covered. Red Penguin Books deal in publishing services, book development, and ghostwriting for digital, print, and audiobook. Call us at 516 448 4993 or visit our website www.redpenguinbooks.com
Welcome back to Between the Covers. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> well, I managed to get the champagne open because we have a book celebration <laughs> and we have a little surprise for you. Oh. I know how much you love holding your book. Yes. Okay. Well, we have something else for you. Come on out here. And okay. We have something that if Lois likes oh. her book. Oh. 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 It's your book on a cake. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I need a picture of that. Okay. Look at her. Hold Tilt it a little bit yeah, this way. Go. Yes, yes. <laughs> we need to take a picture of the book and the cake. Oh, look at that. Okay, Lois, look, look this way. Yes. Love that. <laughs> okay, nobody That's has ever gorgeous. coordinated with the cake as, as well as you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and it's delicious. <laughs> it, is, it is fabulous. And we're going to start cutting the cake because I'm hungry. <laughs> But I do want to take a minute to introduce Valentine. Hi, Valentine. Who is my friend. Hi, and Valentine. He travels with us and just makes me feel good. So I just wanted to have him here as well. Well, yeah. you can. Yeah. <laughs> Does Valentine like cake? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, then good for Valentine liking cake. <laughs> no, that's so gorgeous. Thank you so much. You're yeah. very welcome. Thank I you. have a cutter. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> We're it's a real party. <laughs> it's a real party. <laughs> of course. I even have, well, because Red Penguin books. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Christmas time is great because I can get penguin stuff and then I use it all year oh, yeah. round for yeah. Red Penguin books. Absolutely. And Stephanie wears something red every single day. Just oh. so you and know. And that's why we're sitting on red couches. It's a little, oh. it's a little thematic a thing. thing. <laughs> so while I cut your fabulous book cake and celebrate, um, take us a little bit through why Game Changers, Women Who Make a Difference. You know, I've had the privilege of really knowing so many women who have supported me in my career for a long time. And I really wanted to recognize them for the impact they made, not just on my life, but on so many other women's lives. And I think just reading about these women, what they've gone through, why they do it, what they're passionate about, will just make leaders out of more women. I love mm. that. Oh, I love great. that. Mm -hmm. And especially because, you know, I always hear about women hurting other women in the business world, mm -hmm. not being helpful to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you've heard it too. Yes, yes. absolutely. And, and experience it. And, mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, you know, my feeling is when the tide rises, everybody the rises. The boats all go up yeah. together. That's right. right. So right. we want right. to have each other's backs. Yeah. And when absolutely. I hear about someone doing, I mean, it's bad enough in business that people people can be mean. Mm -hmm. But to hear a woman who's just taken the, the rug out from somebody else, yeah. mm -hmm. so I'm so thrilled that you wanted to shine a light on, no, this is not, this is not what we're about. That's right. 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 That's right. You know, and, and to really honor those people who came before you in a path, mm -hmm. and the ones who are walking side by side with you now, and the ones who are behind you, mm -hmm. for whom to come. we are all clearing a mm -hmm. path. Yes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's yes. a wonderful topic for the book. So uh, when you decided Game Changers, Women Who Make a Difference, yes. you have five that are um, featured in this book. Yes. Tell me a little bit about how you came to them. Oh my goodness. Um, well, and I'm cutting cake because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Well, Teresa that was an easy one. <laughs> I've known Teresa for many, many years. Mm -hmm. but, but you didn't know a lot of things about her. That's exactly. right. Mm -hmm. We discovered we have so much more in common. Mm -hmm. I'm just meeting uh, Dr. Lisa Newland um, recently. I've been doing some work with Malloy College, mm -hmm. and so that's how we've kind of come together. Wonderful. And so it was great getting to know her. And the one thing I have to say is that each woman's story was so different, you know? So it was just like how they started, where they started, but they're all here now. And not only were their stories different, but the lessons that we can learn from their stories mm -hmm. absolutely were all different. Yep. Now, yep. there's also Esther Fortunoff, who couldn't be here today. Right. And then there's also Marsha Haygood, who we'll be seeing later yes. on. She is in uh, Florida. She's a snowbird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poor baby. <laughs> yeah. When so she bad. comes on Skype later, we're going to be a little annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you, I've known Marsha longer than I even care to say. And I remember one time I was in between jobs, and I was looking and someone said, you have to go and meet this woman. And I didn't remember her name. And so I called her up. She said, sure, come on over. We made an appointment. And I got to her office, and we were both like, that's you? <laughs> oh, wow. 
that's and that's been a lot of years ago. Mm, that's very, very funny. <laughs> so, yeah, for a long time, these ladies have been there as a support for me. Right. So not only are they in the book now to share with other people, but they were shared with you in a special way writing the book. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. You really learned more about each one of them. Yes. Now, here's kind of a, an odd question, but I'm sure I know you. Um, <laughs> Did you learn anything about yourself in writing the book? <sighs> good question. That is a good question. Um, and you can you know, pause. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think I learned. My, my personal philosophy is that I can learn something from every single like interaction that, mm -hmm. that I have. You are a lifelong learner. And I know so, that about you. And mm -hmm. so when you go into any conversation like that, even when I do coaching mm -hmm. and I'm helping other people, but I'm learning from them also. Right, right. So I love that as yeah, well. Absolutely. Now, now that you mentioned coaching, can you tell our viewers a little bit about you and what you do? Well, Besides being an author. <laughs> <laughs> I had a career in human resources in corporate America. Mm -hmm. And five years ago, I decided um, to change paths. Okay. And the path was kind of changed for me when my organization um, moved from Long Island down to Jacksonville, Florida. Oh. And so at that time, Marsha, who's going to be on, right. asked me three life-changing questions. She said, what do you want? She said, what will you accept? And she said, what will you say no to? Ooh. And I said, you know what? I think I'm going to say no to that nine to nine again. Mm. Mm. Right. right. And so I spoke I to my husband, Joe, <laughs> in the studio audience, who was very, very supportive. And he was like, go for it. So I got certified as a coach. I also do diversity and inclusion, consulting and training, writing, and also a lot of inspirational and motivational speaking and leadership as well. Okay. So this, this pivot in your life that was not your choice and rather but unexpected, you know what? but it, it well, led to this. It led to this. And it led to me to putting together four things I'm really passionate about doing, and that's my gig now. Yeah. So like they say, if you're doing something that you love, it's not really work, right, right. and it's kind of like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that lesson, and, and many of the women in your book have a similar, you know, life hands you something that you didn't expect. Absolutely. You didn't necessarily yeah. ask for. Right. right. But yeah. what you do with that and the decisions you make, and Lois, the decisions that you made, led you here. Yes. And years ago when this first happened, you were looking ahead saying, you know, I don't even know which path to take. Yes. And this is the path you took. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. So we're here and we're celebrating a new book. And did, did the process of getting here, let me say, harder or easier than you thought? Easier. Ooh. Okay, nice. easier. And so my very first book, which is called New Dawn, New Direction, mm -hmm. and excuse me, I need a tissue. Sure. Okay. Those things happen. It's real. This is live. It's <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my first book, actually, um, I was approached by a new publisher mm -hmm. um, who wanted me to do my memoir. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And that's how that kind of got, got started. Right. And so he did it as a, a kind of speak your book type of thing. Okay. So all I had to do was be interviewed. Right. And they turned it into a book. Okay. You know, I edited it. Right, they right. They sent me some covers and some designs and things like well, that. Well, that sounds rather easy. So yeah. I'm su almost surprised you're saying that this was easy then because it sounds like you, you're, you're good at this. You it know? was fun. Good. It was fun. Good, good stuff. We don't want it to be hard. We want to tell the audience you can do this. <laughs> That's, That's right. the goal. Let's tell the audience you can do this. So mm -hmm. many people that I meet say, I have a book in me. Mm -hmm. So many people say that. And so I try to encourage them. I've even introduced you to yes. a couple of people. Yes. Well, I, I, you've heard me say that there, there was a survey that 90% of the people polled writing a book was, was on their bucket list, their goals, mm. one of the things they wanted to do in their life, 90%. Wow. Yeah. Now, here in America, I don't think it's very much encouraged mm. because probably less than a half a percent actually do. Right. Unlike in Iceland, where 60% of the adults in Iceland have published a book. Mm. Wow. Now, maybe because oh, it's cold and they have nothing else to do. <laughs> but, but 
I think it's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in the, you know, half percent. Okay. And twice. Yes. Right. Right. And twice. And this is going to be published every two years. So every two years there will be a new Game Changer book featuring different women. And so I'm really just really looking forward to that. Oh, I love the sound of that. And I'm going to tell the baker to keep it ready. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's going to be a different. Um, it'll be a different design. Next yes. Maybe a different a game. Different maybe color. Yes. A different oh, maybe it'll be checkers or Monopoly <laughs> or something. Well, we're going to pass around some cake. Take a short break and we'll be right back. <laughs> cake, ladies? No, oh, thank you. Like a small piece. Have Are you interested in writing, but you're unsure how to get started? Or perhaps you're already an author, but want to hone your skills and receive supportive, yet constructive feedback. Welcome to WebWritersRetreat.com, developed to help once and future authors like you to gain from positive and supportive criticism of your submissions from other writers and our professional staff, push forward through personal timetables and writing exercise sessions. Sharpen your skills through group coaching and Q&A sessions with literary experts. Receive practical resources such as templates, downloads, links, online courses, and free ebooks. Benefit from book reviews and opportunities to join a beta team to enrich yourself as well as other authors. Save with special discounts for publishing services and online courses, social media, and email marketing, and a whole lot more. Visit WebWritersRetreat.com and turn your writing dreams into reality. Hey everybody, this is Motorcycle Mike, the personal injury lawyer. In addition to representing injured motorcyclists for over 30 years now, during that same time, I've represented countless car crash victims and construction workers injured on construction sites. If you need my assistance, go to my website, MotorcycleMikeESQ.com. I will always be there for you. Welcome back to Between the Covers. Thanks for joining us. We all had to swallow quick before they came back. We have two of our game changers right here on the couch with us, uh, Teresa Sanders and Dr. Lisa Newland. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank oh. you for having us. Did you Absolutely. know you were getting cake out of it? No. <laughs> That's a bonus. That's a bonus. You see, I didn't want to tell you because I wanted it to be a surprise. It, I, it was. <laughs> I wanted it to be a surprise. And look, when I was cutting it, I kept the part that looks oh like my the book. Oh, my God. Yes. Because you get to bring home the extra. <laughs> All right. So, Teresa, tell us a little bit about yourself so that our audience knows who you are and what you do. So, I have been um, living on Long Island for well over 40 years. Uh, we moved from Harlem and uh, moved to East Meadow, where my father was in the military. And then we moved from Mitchell Field Military Force Base to Suffolk County. Wow. And I've been out here ever since. I love living on Long Island. Do you? Yeah. What's your I favorite mean, thing? The beaches. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the close access to the beaches, um, the ability to walk outside and just do nothing. Maybe just mm -hmm. sit on the step outside, or, yeah. you know, go in the backyard. It just feels free. Mm. And you're a hop, skip, and a jump from the you know, awesome. mega capital in the world. Yeah. So, you know, That's if you true. want that, you can get into mm -hmm. the city. But I, I just love um, the the atmosphere. I've met some great people, raised two great children yeah. on Long Island, um, had access to great educational institutions. And so it's, it's one of my favorite places to live. And I do do a lot of traveling, but it's always great to know, you know, you come home. Right. Well, Teresa's going airplanes. to be traveling this evening, yes. going to oh. Philadelphia. Tonight? Connecticut. 
Oh, yeah. Connecticut. Connecticut. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So Tonight. Big conference. Yes. <laughs> big conference. And um, we'll be getting on the road because I have a full day tomorrow. Mm. But again, the things that I love about, you know, being on Long Island and, and the great people that I've met on a, on a professional level, a personal level, have been game changers to me um, personally. And so... Uh, I met Lois in my professional journeys, and you know we often used to laugh when I would come in her office and look at some of the old pictures. Like <laughs> we've known each other that long, <laughs> um, and so it was an honor when she asked me to be part of this book. Beautiful, yeah. thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful, thank you. And Dr. Newland, tell us a little bit about you. So call me Lisa, Lisa. please. <laughs> um, so I'm originally from the Bronx, and I, I love my, my my Bronx identity. It was very very formative. I lived in the Bronx before. Did you too. really? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. born in the Bronx. There you go. Oh. There you go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know we had that in common. Yeah. yeah. So look at that. What we're right. finding out. And so that was just really important for me to always connect to because it's my roots, right? It's yeah. where I went to to school, high school. I went to Morgan State University in Baltimore. Ooh. Yes, the HBCU, and that was very formative in terms of college. And I knew going into college that I wanted to be a social worker, and I felt so um, uh, connected to the idea of not just helping people, but also working on behalf of social causes, because I had a lot of influence from my family on that. My right. father was active in the community. He started, like, the first tenant patrol in our public housing development. Mm -hmm. My mother was active in church. He was active in church as well. So I kind of grew up around the idea of active engagement with community and so that was really important so when I found out that social work wasn't just about helping people individually with counseling services but also this part of the the social issues and social justice that was a real attraction for me so a I was thankful for me in terms of making that decision which has really been great so I came to Long Island later I've just been here since 2004 mm -hmm. um, we lived in Harlem you heard mm -hmm. you mentioned Harlem. The Harlem we, we lived in Harlem um, before coming out here, but it's just been a great experience. I definitely am one of those persons that go into the city regularly, mm -hmm. but it strikes me because I um, teach at Malloy College and I'm always surprised by how many students do not avail right. themselves yep. of the opportunity to go 40, 45 minutes That's away right. into yep. the city. And so the whole insular nature of them not being exposed in some ways or choosing mm -hmm. to have more exposure, you know, was always surprising to me. So learning Long Island over these last few years have been very interesting. I've done it mostly in the context of my profession, social work organizations, different organizations. That's how I met Teresa through an affiliation with the Urban League. Uh, Lois, we met through Malloy. So a lot of those connections have come uh, that way. But it's been a really good learning experience. And I do appreciate the freedom of the front steps in the backyard. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, being able to enjoy that. So it's, it's, it's great, been a great good thing. Great commercial for Long Island. <laughs> 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 Terrific Definitely. commercial for Long Island. Well, I know when Lois was interviewing both of you for the book, she had asked you about your past, your childhood, and some pivots in the road, which we even talked about with mm. you, and some challenges. Anything you'd like to share with us, Lisa? So I always go to the fact that I became a, a auntie mom overnight. Uh, I had to uh, step in and raise my niece and nephew because of my sister's uh, drug addiction. And when we realized that, it was important to just get in there and get the kids and try to figure out how to have a life that would be able to uh, allow them to have a quality of life that they deserved. And so that certainly was a challenge. I was 24 at the time. Wow. My nephew was four. My niece was 11. Oh, wow. And, wow. you know, <laughs> it, it just was what it was. It was and, what it was, and, and you stepped and up. And stepping in. And thank I was, you. Thank you. And I was, How many family members I wish? You know, yeah, here. yeah, yes. yeah, and and many do, you know, many, many families do, do take on those responsibilities. But you know, twenty four, I was young, right? Right. <laughs> I always say I was supposed to be in the club, and, you know, <laughs> right. having yeah. a good time, hanging out, You're doing uh, homework. But it was so funny because <laughs> yeah, <doing> <laughs> we would do that like on Friday nights. I would play the the radio station and have the dance party music, yep. and we'd say, "Okay, we're all at the club tonight," and we would just kind of <laughs> dance and have a good time. So. 
Yeah, so that was definitely a pivot, you know, in the road. Right. A pivot uh, and a sure. challenge, all rolled in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And a moment of pride. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When I look yeah. at who they are now, or even some of the experiences that we had through it all, it could have been much more traumatic than it was, you know, right. for us. We didn't have much of a disruption, you know, from my sister at the time, but then she went through a bit of her healing journey, you know, mm -hmm. over time. We didn't have much contact with her, but then at some point when she did, we started having a little more contact with her, and we, we went through it as a family, and we mm -hmm. got through it as a family, That's which was a which was a, an important thing for us to be able to do. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Teresa, how about you? Any any major challenges or pivots that went on? You know, for 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 me, I, you know, I, I'm you still path. absorbing what Lisa oh, just yes, said. I get yeah. that. So you know, family challenges are, are are deep, and they can make or break the lens that you see the rest of your world through. Oh, and, oh what um, a profound statement. Absolutely. Yes, we were so focused on, my father traveled a lot because being in the military, he was gone a lot. Mm -hmm. So it was just the mother and the kids. Mm -hmm. And you know, it wasn't a lot of resources, but being transplanted from Harlem mm -hmm. to Long Island, was a pivot. Oh, I absolutely. Bet. That's, that's, a, a that's like going to a new planet. Yes. It, it really, really was. It was during the 60s. It was a turbulent time in America itself. Mm -hmm. um, I went to East Meadow Schools, so it was like, where did my parents move me? Mm -hmm. You know, what is this? <laughs> but but I always remember, you know, they gave us lessons. There was so much love in the house oh. that by the time you went out to the cruel world, yeah. you kind of felt ready. For yeah, it. yeah. So it's like, sure. Yeah, sure. yeah. That's yeah. it. You were girded up. You sure <laughs> was. And, and I'm coming back to the books because books were available in our house. Books were always the thing that if you really want to see what the real world is like, this is where you should focus your attention. So we had a variety of books that we read. My mother would allow us to do book orders. And as a kid, you could order these books, oh, yes. subscriptions <laughs> and boxes, uh -huh. and they would come to the house. And we were competitive. I have two sisters. so And we all had different types of books, the Hardy Boys or whatever. And we would order them. And each right. person, when their book order came, you know, it's like, my mother would be like, your books are here. And it would be like, yes. And you tear open the box. That is and it would be like three or four yes. books. What a memory. And all you do is sit down <laughs> and read through those books. And the next thing you knew, your next box was coming. But <laughs> the distraction, I will mm. tell you, for us during that time was that by the time you left the house, you had to go to the cruel, hard world <laughs> where racism hit you in the oh, face. Mm -hmm. Sexism hit you in the face. Yeah. Um, you just it you just knew it was more to life than what was right in front of you, those negatives, because you had different experiences. And and we felt love at home. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. What you yeah. felt at home, the love and the support is not what you were feeling outside. Yes. Right. So but we it carried you pivot. a long way so yep. that you can manage yes, what you have to do. With and you learn to pivot. I like well, when that. you talk about reading, I went to the um, Hempstead Library. My mom used to take me there all the time. And you weren't supposed to get your adult book uh, card until you're like 12. <laughs> By the age of nine, I had read every single book in the children's section. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> and I remember going up to the desk and saying, I need the adult book card. <laughs> and, I, and then I started it's reading. It's like, who's this kid? Right? I know, right? Who's who's this kid? And our mother. children today will yeah. never know what this what is like. Right. No, they, they will don't. never know True. what this is like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, they have access to everything. They do. You know, it's just a very different world. Mm -hmm. But because people have access to everything, they don't necessarily discern what yeah. they should be looking mm -hmm. at at what particular time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. knew I stay in this section <laughs> until, <laughs> until I until go to this. Until she was a grown-up nine. <laughs> until she was a grown-up nine. <laughs> well, we're having way too much fun. We're going to take a short break and then get Marsha in on this so we can Great. continue. Yeah. We'll be okay. right back with Marsha Haygood, who's going to Skype in. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sharon, Sharon Gillette, and I'm the owner of One Stitch at a Time. I've been 
doing this since I'm nine years old, but it became full-time when my husband was diagnosed with cancer several years ago. And I never went back to work because I wanted to take care of him. I feel what makes me stand out is that I care. I take a personal interest in your project. I take the time to find your correct fit and treat you like a friend, not just a customer. So whether it's embroidery, making patches, printing shirts, doing alterations and repairs, or bringing your ideas to life, you can call me at 631-428-1245 or visit my website at www.onestitchatatime.co. Welcome back to Between the Covers. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, you hear all that noise? They're having way too much fun. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> That's because we gave them cake, we gave them champagne. Yes. <laughs> so now they nice. won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but we are delighted that one of our game changers was not able to join us on the red couch, but she is joining us via Skype. So please welcome game changer Marsha Haygood. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I am just fine. Ah. I'm jealous that I'm not drinking champagne. <laughs> really well, you're in Florida, and we're all jealous, but at least the, the least we could have is cake and champagne. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true, and I had 85 degree weather today. So oh, rub it in, rub it oh. in. Oh. <laughs> we feel bad. Right. No, I don't feel bad. <laughs> Could you do me a favor and introduce yourself to our viewers and tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Well, I am Marcia Haygood, and I am the president and founder of Stepwise Associates. Mm -hmm. That's a consultancy, and I do coaching and motivational speaking and traveling around the com country, just sort of sharing ideas and talking to predominantly women who are oftentimes feeling stuck mm -hmm. and uh, I'm trying to motivate them and inspire them to be both happy and successful mm -hmm. and very honored that Lois invited me to hey, be Marcia. part of Game Changers. <laughs> Well, we are Great. so delighted that you uh, said yes to Lois. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Thrilled that you said yes and that you were able to join us today. Um, what are some of the things that you see people getting stuck and how in your own life, you and I spoke a little bit about, you know, uh, making choices. We all have to make choices in our life. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's very nice to, to be able to uh, live my dream. I'm actually doing what I love to do. And as Lois said, when you're doing what you love, it doesn't feel so much like work. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so I'm having a great time doing it. And I can do it in a warm climate. <laughs> Okay, enough, enough. We get it, we get it. You're in Florida. <laughs> you feeling a little anger here? <laughs> yes. Ladies, no hating, no hating. <laughs> but I do love that concept of live your life by design. The life that you choose to live. Sure. Make decisions that make your life in alignment what, with what your choices are. Absolutely. And, and I think that um, I've been able to do that, but that came with 
not only working hard, I mean, because we're always told to, you know, put our heads down and work hard. Um, I think that putting your head down makes you miss opportunity. Mm. And of course, you're going to have to work hard. But I also think you make a plan mm. for what you want your life to be like moving forward. And it's not going to be like that every day, but it could definitely be like that in the long run if you put some preparation to it. And you and I have spoken about that as well. And Lois and I have spoken about just making a plan for what you what you dream, you know, live your dream to the best of your ability. I am so glad you said that. And what a what an empowering statement mm -hmm. to sure. make a plan. There are so many people for whom life happens to them. Correct. And and Marsha, you're there saying, no, make a plan. You might not get it tomorrow or even every day, mm -hmm. but once you have a plan, you have something that you can implement. Absolutely. Right. And, and that puts the power <coughs> with yourself instead of with the world just happening to you. And yeah, I, I say, I, you know, I say to my clients, I'm a, I'm a coach and a, a motivational speaker, and I tell my clients, I ask them, are you letting life happen to you? Is it happening to you or are you designing it? Yeah. Right. And you can design it and you're, you then have something to look forward to. Right, right. Lois? And as a coach, what I often tell people is that I help people make their dreams come true. <coughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But first they have to learn how to dream. Because yes. so yes. oftentimes I think people put their dreams in storage mm -hmm. and then help other people. Mm -hmm. So take your dreams out of storage and put some plans around it so that you can move forward with intention. Mm -hmm. You know, that, Marcia, that is so particularly um, true for women. Yes. yes. You know, we, we are so busy organizing the house and organizing children and mm -hmm. organizing at work and making sure everything is correct. And, you know, you sit back and you think, wait, I didn't accomplish hmm. anything that I wanted to accomplish. And that bucket list that we talked about and the stats you said earlier yes. in terms of how many people have it in their bucket list to write a book. Yeah. It's like how many... Of, of those are women. Yeah, I think you're mm -hmm. so right about that, Teresa, that women normally put other people first, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. it's your your husband, yeah. your children, your job. We are just so used to deferring. And, and Marsha, you're saying one of your first jobs, shall I say, or goals with your clients is to encourage them, in fact, you know, ask them to dream, mm -hmm. right. to find out and get in touch with what their dreams are. Mm -hmm. Yes, I actually have a program that's called DARE, D-A-R-E, and it stands for Dream, Act, what did I say? Oh, <laughs> you sure you don't have champagne? Sorry, Marcia. Maybe you just got champagne, champagne there. I don't even have champagne, but it's Dream, Act, Review, and then Excel. Wow, you know, great. review like what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And you can change it. It's your dream. You can right. do whatever it is you like. That's mm. for sure. Cool. You're it, absolutely right. It's interesting you say that because I have a long-term, um, let's say, person that I know. And mm -hmm. so our kids were about the same age when they were young. And I remember saying, well, let's, you know, hang out. Let's do this and that. She's like, mm -hmm. I have to wait till my kids are grown and out of the house. <laughs> Okay? Well, right. That was 20 years ago. Okay? Wow. Now, she's getting ready to retire. Oh. So look at all that time that was kind of wasted. Yeah. Right. And I know it was because she was, you know, taking care of her children and whatnot. But just to even have that in, in your head, get back to me in 21 years? Yeah. That's oh. a... You know, wow. That's <laughs> a game changer. Yeah. 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 Yes, it is. You know? Yeah. Right. So, uh, exactly right. Yep. So, so Marsha, tell us what you're doing that's living your dreams. What are your dreams that you're doing in your life? Well, I, first of all, it was to, I'm a native New Yorker, born and raised in New York, in the Bronx. And Come on, I, the Bronx. See, everybody. <laughs> the Bronx is in the house. <laughs> and I currently live in Yonkers, in Westchester oh, County. Huh? Um, however, I spend half the year here in Florida where I can do the same things that I could be doing in, besides shoveling snow. Uh -huh. I can <laughs> and eating cake. Flowers. You can't eat cake with us. 
Um, I also, you know, still speak. I do a lot of my coaching is virtual, Mm -hmm. but when I need to travel, I do. I love to travel. As a matter of fact, I'm not there with you ladies now because in two days I leave for India. Oh, Oh, wow. (laughs) And it's about thinking about all the things that you want to do and then trying them. Um, and not being fearful and stepping out of your comfort zone yeah, yeah, right. and um, and just doing the things that I love. I have been watching people do all of the climb the social ladder and you and climb the corporate ladder. And I did that. Uh-huh. And now it's time to just enjoy life. I don't want to. I, I did not want to wait the 21 years, as Lois said, her friend did, uh-huh. yeah. to start doing things. Sure. And I, I personally tell Lois is the nice, the nice coach. When she talks <laughs> to people, she says, "Oh, okay." I would say to that friend, "Stop blaming your kids." For <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, I so you and Lois are like, like good cop, bad cop. <laughs> you know, you don't have to start um, doing it right away, but you start small. Um, we have three grown sons, and they know that we always did some of the things we love. And, and, and now they laugh because they say, wow, they're spending our inheritance. And, <laughs> oh, well, you better, you better work hard and make your own plan. <laughs> and that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Now, I know you're traveling to India. Um, how many continents have you actually been to? Six. Six? I've been to six of the seven continents. Oh, wow. So wow. What, what did you miss? Um, Antarctica. Okay. Wow. <laughs> she so, won't go because it's cold. I was trying to say it's kind of consistent. <laughs> well, I figured, I figured that, but just, I mean, maybe she went to Antarctica and she missed Australia. I figured it out. <laughs> Two years ago, I was in Australia and New Zealand. So, wow. yes. Were you really? Oh, India wow. was the first time for India, and first? we're pretty excited about it. Oh, I don't blame you for being excited nice. about yes. that. Nice. Nice. That's just wonderful. Well, uh, Marsha, could you do me a favor and share with our viewers, and I'm going to ask our ladies on the couch the same question, where our viewers can find you? Because I know that you are a coach and you have uh, so many things to share. Do you have a website or someplace where our viewers can find you? Absolutely. My website is the name of my company, Stepwise Associates. My name is my, on social media. You can find me by Googling me, and that's the best way to find all of them. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't done Pinterest so much. Recently, <laughs> so I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, but you can find me on all of those. And I do uh, coaching, and I what I really love is going to organizations and doing workshops and speaking engagements to discuss success strategies mm-hmm. and leadership skills. So important. And uh, just career uh, strategies as well. So I go all over the country doing just that. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing your contact information with our viewers because we need that. Mm-hmm. Sure. We need those workshops and success mm-hmm. strategies mm-hmm. and empowerment. Yes. For, for all but for women who so often put other people first. Yep. Mm-hmm. That That's is right. so very Absolutely. true. Marsha, I can't thank you enough for taking your time out from that sunny day <laughs> 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 to join us today. And I am thrilled that you were uh, participated in the book and that you were here on the call. And, um, and we'll be seeing you soon when you come back to New York, because I know eventually you will make your way back up here. I definitely will. And thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, Lois. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Marsha. And for our viewers, we'll be right back after this uh, short announcement. Thanks. Thank you. That was cool. Yeah, that was was cool.
have a book, either in your head or on your desk, just waiting to get out to anxious readers? Hi, I'm Stephanie Larkin, author, book developer, and head penguin at Red Penguin Books. We're a publishing company specializing in books of all genres and publishing in all formats, including digital, audible, and print book. From business books to romance, memoirs to mysteries, our authors have complete control over their books from start to print. We'll help get your book to booksellers all around. Major booksellers such as Amazon, Apple, Kobo, Walmart, even libraries and bookstores around the world. We believe in our authors. So call or email today to get your free publisher's packet to get started. Just visit us at redpenguinbooks.com and get your book out there and into the hands of your readers. At Red Penguin Books, you call all the shots. So call us today and turn your dreams into a reality. Thanks so much for joining us on Between the Covers. And we had, we had Skype guests far and wide, but we have one game changer who couldn't make it tonight. Esther Fortunoff yes. is one of our game changers. And, and what a game changer she has been. Absolutely. And so I interviewed her actually at her home in Old Westbury. Wow. And it was just so homey. Was it? <laughs> it was so it wasn't, homey. It wasn't stiff? No, not at all. I would all. think it would be so perfect. It was very lived in, mm -hmm. and she took me on a little tour and showed me some things that she likes to collect, oh. and things she likes quilting, and she likes um, things from the, uh, I guess it's World War One or Two, really? and so she has a lot of those things mm -hmm. on her walls. It's very interesting. But she describes herself, and I want to read it because I know she wanted it specific, as a third generation retailer designer and now runs Fortune Off Fine Jewelry. Third generation. That that in itself is accomplishment. Yes, yeah. yes. it is. Yes. Family yes. business yes, is. is not yeah. easy. And third generation retailer and the Fortune Off name. Yes, absolutely. Mm. And so she's actually traveled all over mm. the world uh, seeking out gems and diamonds and things like that. Mm. And so she talked about a trip that she did in Europe in I guess the 70s mm -hmm. with her dad and this tall African-American very skinny man she's like we really stood out <laughs> 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 and so she grew up like that so it's just really fascinating so she asked me to share that on her behalf yes. and I just thought that was just an interesting tidbit what about an her. What an adventure for you to, oh, yeah. to see her home and yes. to learn more about her. Yep. You know she's really a woman of stature who has paved the way right. mm -hmm. for all of us. Yeah. And I tell you something, when you send her an email, she gets right back to you, you know. She's offered actually to do a Game Changer event nice. at her jewelry store. Yes, oh, that's wonderful. 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 Yeah, wonderful. so we're looking for a date. We're hoping that Marsha can be here. Mm -hmm. yep. Lois, yeah. when you first approached me about Game Changers and women, I have a daughter. Mm -hmm. And, and I, my daughter just walked in. Hey. Oh, there we are. I love what you and all of these game changing women are doing for my daughter. Mm. Mm. You know, really, we struggled. Mm. You know, all of us. And, and for my daughter and for all of our daughters out there, that the path is a little smoother and that they can see some light in front of them because of yourself and from the women who have you've interviewed. That is such a gift, and I'm so glad you're shining a light on them. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. That's just amazing. <laughs> uh, Lisa, where can our viewers find you if they want to get in touch? So I'm the chairperson of the Department of Social Work at Malloy College. Wow. So I am on Malloy College's Terrific. website, and that's where I am. But I also have a private um, business where it's a consultation services. Oh. So my website is educate to elevate cscom and the two is a number and it's a combination of clinical social work services and consultation and training so I can be found there I'm also on Facebook Wonderful. with some different Facebook groups and associations but those are the two primary places thank you thank you and Teresa where can our viewers find you well you can find me on Facebook under my name Teresa Sanders I also am available under the Urban League of Long Island, mm -hmm. which is www.urbanleaguelongisland, all spelled out. Long dot, o -N -G. Yes, gotcha. dot org. Mm -hmm. It's a dot org. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the, the piece that changes the most is Facebook. So if they follow 
Teresa Sanders or Urban League Long Island on Facebook, mm -hmm. you get to see real-time action. Yes. That's <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. And Lois, I know I've been putting your information all over, but our guest of honor, where can our viewers find you? Besides Amazon.com. <laughs> <laughs> because well, you have the book now. So where oh, else? I'm actually on LinkedIn. Oh, and that's the wonderful. only uh, social media that I'm on. Okay. So you can always look me up on LinkedIn. You can always Google, as Marcia had said earlier. Right. And my website is loismcooper.com. Terrific, because I'm sure that our viewers want to be following you <laughs> and, and snapping up the book and everything <laughs> else like that. And I can't thank you enough for, for all that you've done to gather these amazing Thank you. No, it's been, Absolutely. It's been fabulous, and we're going to be partying for the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it is fabulous. Now, uh, for our viewers, if you forgot everything that you just heard, I'm going to ask them all to email me those links. <laughs> so oh, wait, um, sure. if you visit yep. BetweenTheCoversTV.com, you can watch this episode connect with all of our fabulous guests buy the book <laughs> <laughs> and join us for other episodes as well I can't thank you enough for joining us every week for BetweenTheCoversTV.com and again congratulations to our new author Yay. Thank you. Thank you. thanks for joining us and have a great night <laughs>